Hello and welcome to the Monday, October 28th, 2024 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. In Diaries today, just a quick reminder that older Ivanti vulnerabilities are still uh, being exploited quite aggressively. Had two today that sort of raised uh, some alarms and uh, both of them were which you discussed back in January and also exploited back then. And it's of a combination of, first of all, an authentication bypass vulnerability, and that's a pretty straightforward directory traversal issue. And then secondly, of course, how it's being exploited, where the one scan that we're seeing here is not really the exploit itself then, but check if a specific backdoor or web shell is being installed that has been seen in some of these earlier exploit attempts back in January. The web shell here is a little bit tricky to detect in the sense that it's not sort of additional files being added to the system, but uh, files that exist on the system uh, being uh, modified. And SSD Secure Disclosure published a blog post with details regarding a vulnerability affecting at least one Wi-Fi access point vendor. This particular access point is made by Arcadian. However, the vulnerability is sort of interesting in that it's not in software that's actually sort of required by this particular vendor or by this access point, but the vulnerable software here is produced by the Wi-Fi Alliance. Wi-Fi Alliance is an industry organization that verifies if appliances like this comply with the respective uh, Wi-Fi standards. And in order to facilitate this, they actually developed a test suite. The problem here is that Arcadian apparently still left this test suite enabled on its production routers that were sold to the public. But it's very possible that other vendors did the same thing. If uh, this test suite is enabled, it listens on port 80 and 8080 and also facilitates remote code execution. So double check your routers. Again, there may be other vulnerable uh, vendors here. However, of course, uh, these ports are commonly listening for things like admin interfaces. However, this test service does not respond to HTTP. So that's sort of one quick test that you can run in order to figure out if your device is vulnerable. And then there's an interesting vulnerability in Okta Verify for iOS. Uh, this is an authenticator application being used uh, by Okta. And it basically, like many of these uh, applications, does present the user with a pop-up where they can either approve or deny a particular authentication request. Due to a mistake in how this user interface has been implemented by Okta on iOS, there are certain situations where a user may approve a a request even though they selected deny. For example, if there's a push notification directly on their lock screen and they're not first unlocking the device, probably something where that shouldn't really uh, pop up in the first place. Secondly, also with interactions on the home screen. And then also if you're using this application on the Apple Watch, this may show up. Okta also gives some advice in how to tell requests apart based on the iOS versions. So you could go back and review if any of the users that use the older versions of the application had some suspicious login requests approved. And Aquasec published their observations with recent attacks against insecure Docker environments. This is something that keeps on happening. So definitely make sure that you are securing respective APIs. In this example, the attacker is referred to by Aquasec as Team TNT, and they appear to be specializing in deploying crypto coin miners on vulnerable systems. Typically, this should not be that difficult to recognize given that usually your CPU usage and such will be 
adversely affected uh, by uh, this particular attack do not just block uh, the IP address and host name and such in that uh, particular uh, blog post because these are things that keep constantly changing. You must secure your uh, Docker environment. These type of crypto miner attacks are probably the least severe thing that could possibly happen if you have an insecure environment. Well, and this is it for today. Thanks again for listening. And remember, there will probably be no podcast either on Thursday or Friday this week, depending on how my uh, travel schedule works out. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.